I like him. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you guys this morning. I, you know, just real quick before I start the message today, I want to say two things. Number one, we as a church will always love broken, messed up, imperfect, goofy people, no matter what. And I will continue to teach God's word and harass every single one of you every week. So you can count on that. So nothing's changed there. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that. So there we go. Uh, his love never changes. So chillax, will you? All right. So here we go. Today we're going to talk about, uh, we have two more weeks of this series, which you probably didn't have any idea, but he gives us talents is what we're going to talk about today. Have you ever been put in an awkward position? Do they have me up really loud? Am I blowing you guys away? You can turn me down just a little, just because everybody's sleepy. It's summer. They just want to take a nap. I actually pointed at somebody who fell asleep during the service last night. It was hilarious. All right. So this may be a really bad message. That's not, you know. So if you need a nap, I guess this is a good one to nap on. I don't know. Uh, but have you ever been put in a position where you really were uncomfortable and didn't know what you were doing? When I went to college, uh, Palm Beach Atlantic College. When I went to college, it's now Palm Beach Atlantic University. <laughs> so when I went to college, though, uh, there's a lady named Jennifer Rothschild there. She's just a little older than us. She actually plays uh, piano and stuff for women of, not piano, but she actually leads worship sometimes for women of faith. Some of you may know who she is, but at that time, she was not famous. She was just my friend, Jennifer. So anyway, um, so I came to this college orientation. There were hundreds of students there, and it was my first year there, although I was a sophomore. And so at the end, they had all this, you know, in college, here's what you have to do, and blah, 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 and study, and, you know, whatever. I don't know. We didn't listen. So they finished that part, and then at the end, if you've never been to Christian camp, you don't know this. So I'm going to tell you, for those of you who are either fairly new Christians or didn't grow up in church, the Christians always try to be a little cool. It never quite works, but we try. And so years ago, do you remember the song, Lue Lue? Right? You know that song? Well, the Christians stole it and changed it to Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Did anybody know that? They changed it. See, you didn't even know that. But anyway, they changed it to Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Oh, baby, let my people go. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. So just so you know, and most Christians are actually more familiar with that version of the song than they are with the other, which is really strange. But anyway, so it shows you why Christians are viewed as weird. But that's all good. So... Jennifer has a few of us come up. I was one of them. Now, you have to understand, if you come to me and you give me four directions, Eric, I need you to A, B, C, D, you're not getting any of them. I'm not saying you're getting one. You're getting none of them. So she said, she, she stood up, she came to the front, she said, when I say, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, you need to do this. And then when I say, oh, you need to do this. And when I say, baby, you need to do this. And then what's the last one? Somebody told me last night. Baby, let my people go. Is it like that? Anyway, my helper left. Anyway, she's helping with children. So uh, they do that or something. But I had no idea. By the time she finished the fourth one, I had forgotten all four. So she goes and gets on the piano and starts the song. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. Everybody else, so I'm trying to watch them. And, of course, I'm behind. But here's what's funny about it. I was totally embarrassed, totally frustrated, realized I shouldn't be up here, didn't know anybody and yet I'm going, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, you know, I'm, you know, uh, uh, you know, I didn't know what I was doing the whole time. Let my people go, whoo, you know. Um, and if you've ever seen me dance, that's worse than any of this. But um, so we finished. I'm just mortified. But everyone thought it was funny, and they thought I was being funny, which I wasn't. I was just being like no clues. So I'm trying to catch up. So they think I'm being. So people are like, oh, that's great. After this event, but I tell you, listen. Sometimes when you do something that's out of your comfort zone, you get blessed anyway. So afterwards, four really pretty freshman girls came up to me and said, Hey, you want to go to the movies with us? And as a normal guy, I said, No, really, I have to study. No, oh, I went to the movies. So we went to the dollar movies, and Neil remembers this too. We had, within about two miles of our school, dollar movie night. And it was the first time I had ever been on campus, first time I ever been on I walked into Dollar Movie, and the whole student population is in the lobby. And I walked in with four girls, and suddenly people thought I was cool. They had no idea that I was absolutely an idiot who had no idea what I was doing. But it was good for a night. I was excited. It was great. 
Listen, there's times where you get put in a situation where you're really uncomfortable. I had a wedding yesterday, and uh, sometimes people change vows. So I said, listen, if you guys want to write your own vows or something, you know, go ahead. Well, okay, normally a wedding I do is two pages. He sent me five additional pages to read on the beach. I was freaking out because I have a hard time just like you see what happens on Sunday and I have notes. You should see it at a wedding and you're not supposed to upstage the bride and groom. So it's like really bad. And so I was nervous. I did a play in high school. I couldn't do three lines straight. There's times where you get put in a position that's not your own. But today, here's what I want to talk about today. Today, I want you to know something. God wants you to use your gifts. And if you as a Christian feel like you've grown a little bit stagnant, or you haven't really grown, or you just kind of come to church and do your thing and go home, I want you to know something. God wants you to build your spiritual muscles by using the gifts he's given you. And here's even the bigger thing. As I talk about this message today, I want to encourage you. Some of you have been maybe using a certain gift. You know, maybe you have the gift of service. So... You know, on Sunday mornings, you come and maybe you help set up chairs or maybe you help with the coffee or maybe you greet at the door. I want to encourage you not only to do what you're doing, but begin to say to God, God, is there something else? Is there another gift that I have that you can use? And I want to challenge you to get out of your comfort zone and build your spiritual muscles by doing something or blessing somebody going out of your way in a way you never have before. See, today we're going to talk about the idea of blessing others, that we should discover our gifts because God has a purpose for you, and then you and I have to develop our gifts. So number one, the purpose of our talents is to bless others. In Romans 12, 5, it says it this way. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. One of the creepiest songs when I was a kid, I don't know if you remember it, I don't know who it's by, one of you will probably know, but it went like this. You belong to me, tell her, tell her you're foolish. Right, you know what I'm talking about? He he sang it a lot better than that. But you remember that song? It was always creepy to me, because it was a guy basically saying, you belong to me, and that seemed really creepy. Almost as, almost as bad as the police song, I'll be watching you, right? You ever really listen to the words of that song? It's really, it's like creepy. It's like, wherever you are, I'm watching you, right? <laughs> Next time you do that song, I want you to just do it in that voice. Every breath you take, every move you make, I'll be watching you. It's kind of creepy, isn't it? But... Here's what's wild. This verse, Romans 12, 5 says, each member belongs to the others. And here's our problem in America. Our problem in America is that we are very independent. We think life's about us. We don't like to work with other people. And with the advent of the computer, we've actually become more, not less. We've become more independent. Uh, We even have the Declaration of Independence. We're going to celebrate that next week. But listen. So often, we have gifts that we keep closed. We don't open them. We don't go out of our way to realize we're supposed to bless others with our gift. You ever seen the movie Cast Away? How many people have seen the movie Cast Away? All right. Some of you haven't seen it. It's a great movie. So one of the things that's always driven me crazy, well, it's always driven me crazy in the movie Cast Away is he keeps one box. Now, I understand the purpose of keeping the one box so he could deliver it. But I remember even the first time I watched that movie, I thought, but what if that's something you need? What if it's a a bag of lighters, a knife, a satellite phone, fully charged? I mean, we don't know what's in the box and the whole time. And you never do find out what's in the box. I'm like, can she open the box? And I see it. No, you never find out what's in the box. She opened it. It's a satellite phone. You know, you don't know what's inside. And so what happens? You sit and you think, Well, I understand the psychological point, but what if it was something that you needed? Let me tell you something. That truth is absolutely true for you. You have gifts 
And some of the gifts that God's given you, you may be using to be a blessing to others. But some of them, you may know that you, you may even know what's in the box. But you said long ago, you know what? I used that gift one time and somebody didn't appreciate it. You know, I worked in the nursery and I changed a diaper and, when I, and, and it was nuclear. And when I handed the child back to their parent and, and thinking the parent was going to go, oh, thank you so much, their diapers are terrible. The parent instead went, oh, you didn't put the diaper on right. Oh. And so I never worked in the nursery again. Grateful people, because we think that serving is about us. Serving is not about you. It's not about me. And here's the deal. Here's one of the big problems in the church. We started using this word volunteer in the church. If you're in church, you're not a volunteer. You never volunteer at church. You never, ever, ever, ever volunteer. Why? Because you're called to be a servant. When you volunteer, you think, oh, look, here you go, God. I'm doing you a favor. No, no. God owns everything. He owns this present. He gave it to you, and he said, please use it. And you go, thanks. I'm going to help a little bit. Here you go. Okay. God's called you to use what he's given you, so use it to be a blessing to others. Philippians 2.4 says, look out for another's interests, not just your own. You know what our society really needs? Sensitive Christians. Christians who not only know what they believe, who not only practice what they believe, who not only know what the Bible says, but they also understand how someone else feels. They understand how another person, they try to get into their shoes, they try to understand how they think. They look not only to their own interests, but to the interests of other people. When Jesus sat but at the woman at the well, did you know she tried to get in an argument with him? Did you know that? She actually tries to get in an argument with Jesus. He already knew her argument. He actually addressed it very nicely. He could have gotten in a fight with her, and he just looked at her, and he basically said, yeah, that doesn't really matter. And the lady was like, oh, dang, I was hoping for a fight. So many people are so used to being beat up by Christians that they don't listen to us anymore. So we have to get to the point that we look not only to our own needs, but to the needs of others. When's the last time you went out of your way to bring somebody a meal who was sick? When's the last time you went out of your way to look around on a Sunday and say, you know what? So-and-so's not here. I wonder how they're doing. We belong to each other. We look for their interests. How are they doing? Can we put our own selfishness aside and be a blessing to other people? In Hebrews 10, it says this, Let us think about each other and help each other to show judgment. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. To show love and do good deeds. You should not stay away from church meetings. I love this. Okay? Most likely, Hebrews was written by Paul. Okay, so this is the guy who wrote most of the New Testament. And he's saying to the first century church, like, they just started having church. They just started getting together. They just started having small groups. And he has to say to them, some of you don't come to church anymore. Y'all need to come to church. He says, don't stay away from church meetings. What began to happen? Oh, I went last week. Oh, I was with those people. And Paul said, listen, but it's not just about you. It's not just about you getting filled up and singing the song that you like and whatever. It's about being a blessing to others. Listen, but you should meet together and encourage each other. Do this even more as you see the day coming. Now, I hate going to the store. I especially hate going to Walmart, I must admit. But I can remember one night, it was at, I couldn't go to Aldi because it was after 9 o'clock. Aldi closes at 9. I got the time down, got my quarter in the car, ready to go to Aldi all the time. Got the bags in the back. I'm, I'm an Aldi shopper. I know how to do it. But it was after 9, so I had to go to Publix. I love Publix. But I didn't want to go anywhere, and I was grumpy. I was grumpy with a capital G and an umpy. And, and I remember thinking, I don't want to go. And I, I got in the car, and I was even in the car, I was like, I don't want to. Go. I don't want to, I hope I don't see anybody. I don't like anybody. I hate everybody. You know, you know, you know, every game one of those meetings. Like, I want to stay, I just I want to be alone, but I need milk. <laughs> Actually, I think it was toilet paper. So they, okay, so anyway, so I pull up to Publix, I go in and I'm just I'm trying. And 
I go in, and I ran into somebody I know, which as soon as I saw him, I love him, but I went, <laughs> you know what happened? When I left Publix, I was in a better mood. When I left Publix, I didn't hate people anymore. When I left Publix, I realized how selfish I can get really quick when I start to talk to other people. What happens when we come together as a church? Listen, church is not perfect. People are not perfect. We are all messed up in one way or another. We all have a thousand opinions about all kinds of things that don't matter. But when we come together through the power of the Holy Spirit and under God's word, we're encouraging each other. We're being a blessing to each other. We lift each other up. And Paul says, hey... Don't neglect doing that. You have to make a plan. So here's what I want to encourage you to do when it comes to give. Listen. If you're going to exercise, I'm not talking about casting out demons, okay? If you're going to, which will actually, uh, but if you're going to exercise, if you're going to start running, you can't just like walk out of here and start running down the street. I mean, hopefully, that would be scary. If everybody just left church and started running towards Grissom, that would be weird. So don't do that today. But if you're going to run or do exercise, you're going to have to have a plan. You're going to say, hey, tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up. I'm going to put my tennis shoes on. I'm gonna, right? You're going to have a plan. Here's what I want you to do. Here's your challenge. Make a plan to use one of the gifts God's given you. Maybe it's just, hey, listen, maybe you're a professional Facebook person. You, like, you already have a badge that says professional Facebook person. You've got a degree in Facebook. Hey, send somebody a note. Check on somebody. Tell somebody you care about them. Maybe you're really good at making cookies. Take somebody cookies who you've never taken cookies to before. Maybe you're good at playing an instrument. Go to a nursing home and play that instrument, unless it's bagpipes. It's too loud. It's too, too loud. Play those outside. Use the gift God's given you. Make a plan. Are you using those gifts? I love this Zambian proverb. When you run alone, you run fast. But when you run together... You run far. We really do need each other. Number two, we are gifted for a specific purpose. And we are all different. God has given you gifts that he hasn't given me. It says it in Romans 12, continues. By the way, we're going through Romans 12, if you haven't didn't notice. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. You and I don't think the same. And aren't you glad? You sit here on Sunday and you think, oh, that's good. That's good. I don't want to think like that. We all think differently than each other. We don't always understand each other. And in that, God's also given us different gifts. Some of you are really artistic. And you're really outgoing. Some of you are very artistic and you're very quiet. You just want to, you like to sit quietly. Not talk to people very much, right? And, and some of you are really good. You can, you can paint. You can do all kinds of small things. Some of you are excellent at woodwork. Some of you can sing. Some of you, when you sing, the dogs get upset at you. I remember one time singing, sitting next to Peter Lord in church and thinking, wow, that's a joyful noise. It's exactly what a joyful noise means because he couldn't hit a pitch worth anything. He would, hey, hey, and it was horrible. But he didn't care. He was just going to make a joyful noise. But I would not send him out in public to do that. We, nobody asked him to sing a solo, but he was awesome at preaching. What has God called you to do? What gift has he given you? Because we all think differently. Ephesians 4 says it this way. As each part does its work, it helps the other parts grow. So Christ's whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I want to encourage you. Use your spiritual muscles. If you've been feeling weak spiritually, go out of your way to be a blessing to somebody else. Because what happens so often is we've had a quiet time. We spent time in the Bible. We've learned God's word, but we haven't taken the time to be a blessing in any. Listen, it may be to knit caps for people. The, the port ministry gives out knit caps for the sailors out there. And they said they're some of their favorite things are these little knit caps. Somebody had to sit and go like this for I don't know how long it takes, 10 weeks. Go out of your way. To do something with the gifts God's given you, even though it's different. You may sit there and want to compare yourself to other people and say, well, I'm not like them. I can't do that. Well, then figure out what God wants you to do. You know, we don't even always communicate well. There was a story about a hippie going down the road in his, his uh, Mustang. And he's going down the road in his, or no, excuse me, not a hippie. There's a guy going down the road in his Mustang. And on the side of the road is a hippie guy. And the hippie guy's there with his silk shirt. And he's got a sign he's holding up. And it says, the end is near. 
guy in the Mustang said, I'm sick of these signs. He pulls over, starts yelling at the hippies. He goes, you know what? You need to go get a job and get off the street and go find something to do. And the guy peels out. And the hippie's like, what? what? The guy peels out. And the hippie can hear him going down the street. And he hits the accelerator full blast. And all of a sudden, he hears the car go. Arr! He said, I guess I should have written bridge out on this. We don't always understand each other. Some of us tell really bad jokes. <laughs> but we love each other anyway. In Ephesians 2.10 it says this, God made us to do good works. So here's the question. What good work are you doing? Have you done anything for anyone else this week? Which he planned in advance for us to live our lives doing. God has a purpose for your life. And so here's the second challenge. The first one is remember to make a plan. Go out of your way to make a plan. Here's your second challenge. Ask God to open doors for you to use your gifts. Say, God, you know what? Would you show me what gifts I have? Help me to discover those gifts. But Father, would you also open doors for me to use those gifts to be a blessing? God, would you use me to be a blessing? By the way, that is a prayer that God will always answer. God, I want to be a blessing to other people. I don't want to just think about myself. Would you help me to use my gifts to be a blessing to somebody else? And ask God to open doors for you. Rick Warren says this, the only way you can serve God is by serving other people. Finally, we need to be faithful in developing our talents. Can I tell you something? It is very easy to get discouraged as a Christian. You have an enemy who doesn't want you to bless anybody. So if you come and you help, we had a lady, I, I, this was awesome, okay? We had a lady come, she just started at our church about uh, a month or two ago. She just started at our church. And she came to me and she said, Eric, I really want to help somewhere. I said, oh, okay, go, go back to the kitchen and ask him if you can help. About five minutes later, she came back to me, she said, they told me they don't need my help. Which I said, Please, if somebody comes to you and says, let me help, please find them a way to help. Anyway, so she came back to me. Can I tell you what most people would have done? Oh, they don't need my help. I don't have to do anything in this church. I'm going to sit and sew. By the way, some churches, if you're a new Christian and you come to the church and ask to help, they'll say, oh, no, no, you're new. You just sit here. Some people will say, oh, I'm sorry. We got so-and-so on the soundboard. And we got so-and-so in the kitchen. And we got so-and-so on the door. And we got so-and-so in the back. No, no, you don't, we don't need any help. And they keep people from using their gifts. Well, thankfully, this lady came back to me and said, how can I help? I said, oh, I'll tell you what. I said, I don't know what's going on back there, but go and see my son. If you go and see my son, he'll give you something to do. So she went back there and said, oh, that's great. He said, can you vacuum this back room? Every week since she started at our church, she's gone back every week that she comes and said, I'm going to go and help vacuum. Is there anybody who needs help back there? She went out of her way. But let me tell you something. It would have been easy for her to get discouraged. When you begin to do what God wants you to do, the enemy will plant all kinds of thoughts in your mind. Well, nobody else is doing this. You begin to compare yourself to others. Sometimes people like that diaper story, which is a true story, by the way. Sometimes when you do something good, no good deed goes unpunished. Years ago, I gave somebody a jump start on this property. That week, they called me and said, you blew up my battery. You owe me a new battery. I went and bought them a new battery. Cussed off. No, I didn't. But, but, it, but if, I wasn't, if I didn't understand what was going on, I could have easily said, well, I'm not helping anybody else. See what happens when you help people? Listen, that's exactly what happens when you help people. But you keep helping people, and you keep loving people, and you keep blessing people. Jesus was not well received. Did you ever notice? And yet he loved people, and he used his gifts, and he blessed us. We're to pour our lives out. As an offering. Did you know Winston Churchill failed sixth grade? He was defeated in every election for public office until he was 62 years old when he became prime minister. He had a speech impediment. Did you know that? He later wrote this speech Never give in. Never give in. Never, 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 never. In nothing great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never, 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 never give up. And yet so many of us tried to use our gift at one time and somebody said something mean to me so I don't want to anymore. You're serving a God who runs the whole universe. When we get to heaven... 
<laughs> and the martyrs who gave their lives to their faith come up to me. Come up to me. And I thought about this the other day. They come up to me and they say, how did you suffer for your faith? And I'm going to say, those church people were mean to me. Mean. What happened to you? Oh, I was torn apart by wolves. Oh. Isn't it amazing how our perspective changes when we realize that there are people who understood what it really means to sacrifice for their faith? Use your gifts. Don't let anybody discourage you. It's easy to get to the point that you think, I'm not going to use it. But listen to Romans 12. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's encouraging, give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. This is my favorite. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. I love that last one because the idea of showing mercy is like the idea of going to help somebody. And he reminds them to do it cheerfully because you can go and help somebody. And I've had this happen. I've heard people do this, which is really funny. They get off the phone with somebody. Oh, sure, I'll come help you move. And as soon as they hang up, they go, I can't believe I told them I would go help them move. <laughs> if you're going to serve, do so cheerfully. I'm helping them move. We're servants, not volunteers. When you gather, each one of you should be prepared with something useful for all. Sing a hymn, teach a lesson, tell a story, lead a prayer, provide an insight. Take your turn with no person taking over. That way you'll learn from each other. Listen, one of the best things about small groups is people have opportunities. When we're in a large group like this, it's very difficult for this verse to occur. But when you get in small groups, this is exactly what can happen. Who do we go out of the way for? Who's missing? Who needs encouragement? Who needs a blessing? Who needs somebody to speak love and truth into their life? Who needs somebody to come and help them with their car? Who needs somebody to come and help them with their children? Who needs somebody to come alongside of them and just carry them when they're weak? Go out of your way to serve others. You can't be good at everything, and that's okay. Start to learn. Look around and say, when I do this, not only do I find fulfillment, but I notice that it blesses other people. If you can't sing, please don't sing solos. If you can't do surgery, please don't. If you're not an encourager, quit trying. Just pat them on the back and be real quiet. I'll pray for you. But each of you have a gift that God's going to use. So use that gift. Be sensitive. Be sensitive to other people. Because here's the deal. Luke 1 says it this way. If you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. But if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibility. So last but not least, God wants you to use your gifts. Ask him to bless you. Ask him to help you to develop those gifts. If your gift's encouragement, then ask him to help you. God, make me a better encourager and give me people that I can be an encourager to. If it's mercy, God, help me to use that gift of mercy. If it's the gifts of service, God, help me to serve other people. If it's the gift of giving, God, put a few poor people in my life. Some of you are like, put less poor people in my life. Help me to help people with their finances. Hey, one of the best things you can do in our society is help people learn to budget. Sometimes the best thing you can give them is a little common sense. You know if you weren't spending $200 a month at McDonald's, you might have money for rent. Are you developing your serving muscles? Paul, remember, said he was poured out. Are you pouring out your life for others? Or are you saying, I want to be comfortable. I want to live where I'm at. I just want to show up for church and go home. Listen, the church happens not only here, but when you leave this building, you are still part of the church. And you are to be a blessing to your neighbors and your coworkers. And the key is to pray and say, God, would you show me what you want me to do? Would you show me what my gifts are? Would you help me to use them? Would you bless me in developing those gifts to be a blessing to the world so they could see that you're real? I want to encourage you today. God, would you help me to open that gift? Maybe there's a gift that you put back in the box and you decided, I'm not using that one anymore. Ask God to show you how to use that. To be a blessing to somebody around you.
I want you to grow as a Christian. I don't want you to be selfish. I don't want you to compare yourself to others. And I don't want you to think that serving is about you. It's about serving him and loving the people around you. Let's develop those and love each other. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, one of my gifts is to encourage you to find your way home to him. And if you're here today and you've never surrendered your life to Christ, you're going your own way and doing whatever you want and saying, I'm just doing what I want, I want to encourage you. We're all sinners. We're all broken. And we come to Jesus and he says he forgives sinners. So you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm messed up. And you lay your life before him. And you say, take my life. And I will follow you. That's what it means to be a Christian. If you're here today and you've never done that, I encourage you to do that today. If you're a Christian, but the truth is you've been living selfishly and self-centered, I want to encourage you to begin to say, God, would you burn that self-centeredness out of me and help me to use the gifts you've given me?